what the Lord's in your heart. And I could say, none of us come to get out, we come to get in. Amen. Amen. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> Got too much to say tonight, a little bit of time to say it in. <laughs> so we'll, I told the people, for you who are new, I told the people, I said, I always have an hour and a half message. But if you can listen fast, I can talk fast. <laughs> and I can preach an hour and a half message in 35 minutes. So we can we can put it in there. You just got to put your ears in overdrive, okay? And we'll try to give it. It is good to see some new faces. It really is. How many people are excited about being in God's house tonight? Amen. 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 I hope you are. Hey, I said this last night and I'll say it again tonight. This is better than the best jail in Nebraska to be right yeah. here tonight. Yeah. And we're excited about being in God's house. So you're glad you're not in jail tonight. Say amen. amen. <laughs> and I'm glad I'm not in God's prison or in the devil's prison house somebody talk about devil egg i asked the boys in the house today i said uh, what's the difference in a devil egg sandwich and an egg salad sandwich does anybody know the difference the devil egg you know just egg grated up and everything with mayonnaise or mustard or whatever you know, salt and pepper things like that egg salad has pickles in it right yeah, I don't like that. They have too much, you know, with that and the little pickles in there and everything. So that's the difference. And I wonder why, since we're a Christian, why we call them devil eggs. Why we call them angel eggs or something that's like that. Right. You know? <laughs> might help out a little bit. Uh, open your Bibles tonight in Psalm number 90. Psalm number 90. Now, uh, Brother Wesley Hudson said I had one message, and I preached on faith Monday night, preached on faith last night. So I'll change the uh, gear a little bit tonight. We're going to talk about something else. Now, many things have been said about the family. And Brother Shank said something about families having trouble. And I'll say it's not just here in Blair, Nebraska. In South Carolina, we have plenty of trouble. Let me just say that people are people everywhere you go. Everywhere you go, you got people. And, and I'll say this, the devil is the devil everywhere you go. Evil is evil everywhere you go. Uh, these people from the church over in what? Ralston. In Ralston, who are you? How long Have y'all been there since the church started? No. Okay, I don't know how long you've been there, but uh, there's a group from my church. Some young people came up about four or five years ago. And uh, Spencer Phillips and different ones and John uh, Finley and all them, they came up in that church on a missions trip. And I don't know if y'all were there then or not, but uh, Spencer Phillips, I tell people about him everywhere I go. He's been with in our church since he was four years old. And uh, boy, he always loved church, just loved church. And I thought, well, he'll be a regular person and one day he'll become a teenager and he'll get tired of church and he'll, uh, you know, get out like all teenagers do and he'll go his separate way. But Spencer is about 24 years old now, graduated from Bob Jones University. And uh, Spencer is, is more excited about church today than he's ever been. Amen. Awesome. It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the attitude we take toward church and toward yeah. the Lord. And, and there's a lot to be offered in this world. There, there really is. There's a lot to be offered. And so we've got to decide today that, hey, I'm going to serve the Lord while I have time. Amen. You see, we've got to work while it's day because the night cometh when no man can work. And we waste a lot of time. And that's what I want to talk about a little bit tonight. I want to talk about time. And we all have, listen, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, we all have the same amount of time. I mean, I don't have any more or any less than you do. So what are we going to do with that time that we have that God has given us. And I want to say thank you for the meals today. Uh, Chris Orr, he took us out, or Mr. Moose, he took us out today. <laughs> and uh, we ate uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Mexican food over across from the uh, hotel there, across from the Pizza Hut. And whenever I left there today, I was speaking uh, Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then uh, Miss Shiloh and Miss Evelyn made us a wonderful meal tonight, mm. and it was very, very good. So I don't know if I'll preach long or short because I ate too much. <laughs> I, really, I ate too much. And so I want to read this before I get started. And I saw this the other week, and I thought this was real good. In churches, in our Christian life and everything, and, and I hope you'll pay attention to what I'm going to say. We have a tendency to believe our doubts and doubt our beliefs. We do. I mean, that's, that's where we are. The walk of faith requires us to doubt our doubts and believe our beliefs. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, For we walk by faith and not by sight. We are encouraged to walk by faith, not run. Now, I'm always in a hurry. I am always in a hurry. If I'm in Greenville, South Carolina, and I have some of the men in our church, and we go to Home Depot or something to get some things to work around the church, 
Honestly, I have locked people up in my car. When I'm pulling in the parking lot, I'm already, I've already got the keys out. I'm jumping out of the car and I'm locking it and I'm going and I've locked my wife up in the car a lot of times. I've locked people up in the car because they're so slow getting out. You know, and then I'm walking across the parking lot. I'm inside the store and they're still trying to run to catch up with me. I'm always in a hurry. How many people always in a hurry? We're always in a hurry. We really are. You know, just, just going 90 miles an hour. But we are encouraged to walk by faith and not run. That's what the Bible tells us, to walk by faith and not run. Running has the idea of hurry and make it happen. See, I want everything done yesterday. Everything I do, I want it done yesterday. I, I, patience is not my virtue, let's say that. It's not for me, patience. And I, I want everything done yesterday. And, and, and one man, he came to God and he, he said, Lord... I want patience, and I want it right now. And that's, that's good, isn't it? I want it right now. Right now, I want patience right now. So running has the idea of hurry and make it happen. Walk speaks of a calmness that trusts God to make it happen. And I think that's what we need to learn to do. I need to learn that more than anyone. So when doubts arise, don't run. Just start walking. And, 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 and trust the Lord that He'll see these things done in our lives. Now, here in Psalm number 90, and I do want to say it's been a blessing for us to be here these few nights, and uh, we're looking forward to the next few nights, and uh, we're not anything eloquent, I'll promise you that, you're not going to hear anything eloquent, I'll say a few things here tonight, and you'll understand what I'm talking about, last night I told you a few things of how we talk in the South, and I'm going to give you something tonight, how we talk in the South, especially the Southeast, and, and you'll look at it, and, and we say things so, so wrong, so wrong. <laughs> And only if you come there. In fact, we had a guy, and he's, a, you know, Richard Vance. He's with Macedonia. He does a printing press and all that. And Richard is from uh, Montana. So he was in South Carolina doing a, a vacation Bible school for us. And we went to a little store. I think we went to Big Lots. And uh, he bought a few things for the vacation Bible school. And whenever he checked out the girl at the uh, cash register, she uh, gave him his receipt. And then she told him, she said, blah, 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 blah. He didn't understand a thing she said. He did not understand a thing she said. He, she talked so fast and she said the things wrong. And, and I understood everything she said. And Richard, when he looked and I said, I'll tell you. I said, okay, thank you, ma'am. And I grabbed the receipt, walked outside. He said, what did she say? I said, she said at the bottom of your seat here, there's a uh, little receipt down here and a little tag that you can come back. Next time you come in, you get 5% off. He never understood a thing she said. <laughs> so I hope you'll understand a few things we say tonight as we try to give this message. Uh, Psalm number 90 and verse number 12, and we'll go back to a few other verses here. And I'm going to try to hurry as fast as I can because i got a lot to say. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. The brother who prayed first tonight, he said something about wisdom. And in many things that he prayed in his prayer, I'm sitting there thinking, Lord, he's preaching my message. <laughs> and I preached on this, but this is what I want to talk about. And I hope you'll write this down in your Bible or something somewhere. A couple, just, just four words. The time is now. Amen. The time is now. And, you know, we all have the same amount of time. And, and, and I was in Brazil, and we was at a preacher's fellowship in Brazil. And this Brazilian pastor was up preaching. And he was talking about uh, wanting to go visit and make some visits with this other preacher. And I think they were working together in a certain city. And he called that preacher, and he said, Hey, can you go make some visits with us today? Let's go knock on some doors. Let's go do some evangelization. And he said that other preacher said, I don't have time today. I've got to give my dog a bath. You know, we, we use all kinds of excuses and all reasons not to do something for the Lord. And, and I would be the first to say that in my lifetime, and especially my Christian life, I have wasted many years. I have wasted many hours. I've wasted many days. And we would all have to say that tonight. Would you agree with that? We, we, there are times. We are. We waste time. And so we want to talk about a few things about time tonight. Look, look back in verse number 12. The first word says teach. So teach. That's what I want to look at. Teach. And that word has the meaning of this right here. To learn and to know how. In other words, Lord, I need for you to teach me to learn, to know how, to number my days. Because while we get up in the morning and we do everything else, but go to the Lord, first of all. Mm -hmm. We'll read our paper. We've got to get our cup of joe. We've got to drink our coffee. How many people love to drink coffee? You bunch of sinners. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm not a coffee drinker. I mean, I go to a restaurant, and I'll be with these men. Everybody's ordering coffee. 
And they say, sir, what would you like to have a drink? I said, I want a real man's drink. And they said, what's that? I said, chocolate milk. <laughs> hey, chocolate milk. I mean, that's me. You know, I want some chocolate milk. I love chocolate milk. And I'm not much of a coffee drinker. So I was in a church one time over in Georgia in a missions conference. And after church that night, they had a time of fellowship. And, and the gentleman in the church, he said, preacher, let's go over here and get some coffee and donuts. I said, sir, I'm saved. I said, I don't drink coffee. He said, I'm saved too, but I didn't let it make a fool out of me. So we always have a comeback, don't we? We always have that. We all have the same amount of time. Now, if you look this word up, teach, honestly, this is a southern term. And I'm going to tell you something. Here, where I come from in Greenville, South Carolina, whenever we say, I want to teach him something, we don't say it like that. We say this, I'm going to learn him something. Yeah. You ever heard that? Amen. I'm going to learn him something. I'm going to learn him something. I'm going to learn them how to do this. And I, you, but that's what this word means. It means, Lord, learn us, teach us, show us how to number our days. Then he has another word here. It says number. I hope you underline these words as we go through here. Teach. And then he said number. That means to count. That means to reckon. That means to take account of the days and hours that we have. And then he said the next word we'll look at is days. Days. Go back to verse number 9 if you would. Psalm 90, verse number 9. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. I've preached several funerals in my ministry. And one thing I don't like to do, I don't like to do weddings. And I don't like to do funerals. I get nervous at both of them. And I compare them both the same. Sometimes when I'm doing a wedding, I call it a funeral. Because usually the husband, the man getting married, he's going to die to all the other women in the world, right? Yeah. So he's dying to everybody else. And the lady, she's dying to all the other men. They become one. Is that not right? So I compare a wedding to a funeral. <laughs> but I'll get all nervous. I'll get all turned upside down because of our, our, our funerals that we have. But let me say this, I saw, a, I saw a shirt one time, and I really liked that shirt, and it said on that shirt, it says, live your life so that the preacher will not have to lie at your funeral. <laughs> and that would be a good thing, wouldn't it? Live your life so he, and boy, how many times do preachers lie at funerals? <laughs> there's uh, there's a, 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 a mother and her son was at the funeral of their, their dad and her husband. And the preacher was saying so many good things about him. He was a wonderful husband. He supplied for the family. He was a hard worker. And he loved his wife. He loved his son. He loved his family. And the mom punched the son and said, Go see who's in that casket. I think we're at the wrong funeral. <laughs> and so sometimes we do that. But here we are. Here we are. We come down to this and we have days that we've got to number. And the Bible says our days... And our years are spent as a tale that is told. Verse number 10, the days of our years are three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet is there, is there strength, labor, and sorrow. For in it shall soon be cut off, and we fly away. In other words, he's talking about time here. Our days, our time is <coughs> bad. If you'll turn over to Acts chapter number 1, I hope you'll keep your Bible open tonight. That I didn't do this the last few nights. Well, we're going to look at some verses in the Bible, and I promise you it's going to be a short message, and, and, and I'm just going to give you an introduction tonight of what I'll say hopefully Thursday night and Friday night. Just a small introduction here. But if you go over to Acts chapter number 1, and we'll look at a couple of verses here, verse number 7, and, 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 and the Bible says this, And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the season. Underline that word times there if you would. If you don't mind writing in your Bible, underline that word time. It is not for you to know the times, the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Now, can I stop and say this? Well, we think, young people, we think we have a, a long life ahead of us. There's a school close to our church in Greenville, South Carolina called Wren High School. Wren High School, is, is, they say it's one of the best public schools around, this high school. But I promise you, you can go into that high school and there's not a year goes by during senior prom or graduation or something that they don't have several students who have been drinking, who have been driving, who have been killed in an automobile accident. In fact, you go in the hallway of that high school and they've got a wall and they've got pictures on it of all the students who have died. And, and, and you know what? Young people think, well, I've got many more years to go. If we knew when we were going to die, we'd wait to the last moment to get saved. 
If we knew when we were going to die, when the Lord was going to come back, we would wait to the last minute to serve Him. That's why I want to say again tonight, <coughs> the time is now. Why? We have no promise of tomorrow. Amen. There's nothing we can do. We Listen, not one of us are promised another hour to live, so we must do something now. Verse number 8, he says this in Acts chapter 1, But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me. Can I say that the gift of the Holy Spirit, can I say that the gift of the Holy Ghost, can I say that it is not speaking in tongues? Can I say that it's not healing people? You know, I believe one of the sure signs of a person being filled with the Holy Spirit, he's a witness to other people. Now, the church that we, we pastor today, and I said something about this last night and maybe Monday night, we've been in a small church for many years. The church had been there for 40-something years. And about four years ago, God gave us a new location, 18 and a half acres of land, and a building. And that building at one time was an assembly of God called Southside Assembly of God. They lost it in a foreclosure. And the Lord allowed us to move into that building. We were only two miles up the road. God gave us this place. We've got a lot of buildings, a lot of facilities there. And we use it for the glory of God. Up in <coughs> one of the Sunday school rooms when we was going through the building, they had a blackboard there, a whiteboard there with things written on it. It said, the first sign and evidence of being filled with the Spirit is speaking in tongues. I don't believe that. Oh. I don't believe that. You know, and, and I left that up there for all of our people to see. So this is what I say. And I tell visitors when they come, this used to be an Assembly of God church. And I tell them, we speak in tongues only on the fifth Sunday. <laughs> Just kidding now. Only on the fifth Sunday we speak in tongues. Now, I can, listen, can I say this? Jimmy Swagger. Y'all know him? Y'all heard Jimmy yeah. Swagger? And, and, you know, all these preachers, they come, Rex Humbard and Lois, they, they come to Brazil. You know what? They have to have an interpreter. You see what I'm saying? They have to have an interpreter. Now, I can say some things tonight. For que Deus amou o mundo de tal maneira que Deus seu filho e unigênito para que todo aquele que nele crê não pareça, mas tenha a vida eterna. I can speak to you in Portuguese. You wouldn't understand the thing I'm saying, right? That's right. You wouldn't understand the thing I'm saying. I can speak in Portuguese and I can speak in Brandonese, as I mentioned last night. The place I grew up in, I can speak that. And, and you wouldn't understand the thing. But what I'm saying is, hey, the gift of the Holy Spirit is to be a witness. The feeling of the Holy Spirit is to be a witness. Now turn real quick back over to Jeremiah. Look in the Bible in Jeremiah chapter number uh, 8. In Jeremiah chapter number 8. And, and, and boy, there are just some wonderful verses in the Bible that talks about time. Talk about time. Paul said it there. Luke said it. He said, if not, you know, the times or the season. And in Jeremiah chapter number 8. Have you found it yet? <coughs> All right, Jeremiah chapter number 8, verse number 7. Yea, the stork... In the heaven knoweth her appointed time. So see, the stork knows when he's got to come by your house and drop that baby off. <laughs> Isn't it the stork that brings babies to our houses? So the stork knows when he's got to come by your house and drop the baby off. He knows which house to drop it off at. <laughs> you know, I see some. And it, when our first, do when our, uh, our our oldest is a, is a girl, and how old is Michelle now? 38, 40? 39. She's 39. I don't keep up with all that, but she's 39 years old. And and, and the, whenever they they brought her out for me to see her for the first time, I said, switched at birth. There's no way that's my baby. There's no way that a baby that ugly belongs to me. I said, there is no way. And, but she's grown up to be a beautiful girl. She really has. But I'm just saying, I thought, oh, you know, you know preachers there would go lying again. You know, we go to the hospital, we see that baby that was born. Oh, how cute. I don't know, they're not. I haven't seen many cute babies that were born. Have you ever seen a cute one when they're born? Right when they're first yes. born? No. Yes. Yes. Y'all got to agree with the preacher. The preacher's always right. Preacher's always right. We got two rules here. Great Commission Baptist Church. Number one, preacher's always right. Rule number two, if the preacher's wrong, refer back to rule number one. Okay, we're going to keep that, okay? We always got to do that. So, I, I mean, I, I'm just kidding whenever I say that. I have seen some beautiful babies when they're born, but my daughter, I mean, I just thought, oh, switch that birth. So the stork, he knows his time, right? And it says this right here. It says, knows her appointed times, and the turtle and the crane and the swallow <coughs> observe the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. You see, all of God's creation knows his time, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But God's people, his greatest creation... His greatest creation, His perfect work when He created man, we do not know the time that we should do things for the Lord Jesus Christ. So we go back. 
Go back now, and we look, and he's talking about teach. He talks about numbers, and he said apply. He said help us, and that to means to make it come to pass. Then he comes down to this word heart, and, and, and apply our hearts, our hearts. That's an inner man. That's a conscious. That's a seat of passion. I should love the Lord with my whole heart. Everything that I do, I should put the Lord Jesus Christ first. Amen. And then it comes down, we can talk about it, it's the seat of courage. Now, we're afraid a lot of times to do certain things. And, and we're afraid a lot of times to talk to people about the Lord. And we're afraid to tell. And we, hey, listen, we get our Bible, and we go to our car, or we go from the hotel room to the car, and we kind of want to put our Bibles up under here. Let me stay in my camera tonight. <laughs> Andrew, you're going to have to get up there and turn that thing around to keep that thing pointed at me. Okay, I'm just kidding. But, you know, we, we want to hide. Hey, you ever been ashamed of taking your Bible? We shouldn't be. No, we never should be ashamed of things like that. We should always say, hey, this is an opportunity for us to serve the Lord. I'm working in Brazil, and there in Brazil, I, I think one of the greatest opportunities, we never know the opportunity God's going to give us. And, 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 and I'm not... I don't, I don't keep up. I, I love sports. I love to do things, but I don't let it be something that controls my life. I, I was showing the boys today, or someone today, I got a picture. Last year, my 19th anniversary at Zion Hill Baptist Church, they, they asked, the, 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 the deacons got together, and they said, what can we get the preacher for his 19th anniversary? Well, my son spoke up. He said, well, I know something that my dad would love to have, but he would never buy it for himself. And whenever he told them what it was, they just couldn't believe it. And they said, what would it be? He said, well, he's always wanted an autographed helmet of the Dallas Cowboys with Roger Stahl. But how many Cowboy fans we have here tonight? Man, I know. We, man, we're going to have to have a two-week revival here. We are going to have to have a two-week revival. I mean, there's no Dallas Cowboy fans in here tonight. What in the world is there wrong with y'all? I hope you're not watching the Redskins fans. If you are, you can leave right now. Leave right now. But we, and, and, and they did, they got me an Roger Staubach autograph. Dallas Cowboy helmet. Boy, that was just my pride and joy. That really was. That was my pride and joy. I, I really love that. So whenever I'm going out and, and they send us on a vacation, I was down in Charleston, South Carolina. I see somebody with a red skin uh, jersey on or something. Hey, look what church got me, Dallas Cowboy. I see somebody with a Pittsburgh Steelers hat on or something. Oh, oh, uh. And I would see those people with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And, I, and I'll tell them. I'll tell them all the time. I know. I know. He's, he's, he's talking about blocking out of here. You know? and, and I would say, I would say stuff like this, sir. I tell you what, you are you are a fine looking man, but you got to change that jersey. You got to change that hat. You know what I did? You know what I would do with that? I would take that as an opportunity to witness for the Lord. And that's what you got to do. See, God is teaching us to apply our hearts to see. Listen, sometimes we're afraid to talk about the Lord. And so when we have an opportunity. So in Brazil, I'm working in Brazil. And here, my son, he's playing soccer. He's playing basketball for the city. And, and the gym he was playing in, they couldn't practice that week because they're going to have a boxing match. When Mike Tyson lost his, uh, when he lost the, uh, the, uh, his heavyweight championship belts and all that and had to go to prison, well, they, there's a man in Brazil, they call it Magilla. Anybody ever heard of Magilla Gorilla? Yeah. Y'all remember that cartoon when you were growing up, Magilla Gorilla? Well, this guy was named Magilla. Well, he won one of the belts. And there in our city, the, our small city, he was going to fight a beneficiary fight with a guy from the United States. And so I, I told Nathan, I said, let's go to the gym. I'd just like to see what a ring looks like. They had a ring set up and everything there. And when I went over there, Cleveland Woods, he was a guy from America going to fight Magilla. And he was in there warming up, training up and everything. And there was just three people in the gym. Him, his trainer, and a guy from Las Vegas. And so we walked in there. And when we walked in there, I was able to just watch him and everything. And then after he got through, he came down. He said, you know, talk to him a little bit. And I told him who I was. He said, what are you doing in a small town like this? How did you find this little town? And, and I said, well, I'm a missionary here. Boy, he, it just excited him to know that I was a preacher. He said, my mom that lives in Virginia Beach, he said, she'll love to know that I met a preacher in Brazil, South America. And he couldn't believe it. And so he invited me to come to the hotel room and all that. And, hey, he even invited me to be in his corner in the fight that night. Isn't that wonderful? I was going to be able to be in the corner. I was going to wipe the blood off of him and everything. He said, go get him, boy. <laughs> Suck it up. Don't you lay down on me. Get in there and fight him. You know? 
But I asked him, I said, do you know who Do you know who McGill is? And he said, never heard of him, never seen him or anything. And I told him a few things I knew about McGill, and that's when he asked me to be in the ring. I said, sir, I'd love to. I said, but, I said, I'll, I'll be in church tomorrow night. I don't go to sporting events when it's time to go to church. You know why? Time. Time is of an essence. Now, I, I went in Brazil, South America, 1984. I don't speak Portuguese. I don't understand a thing going on. But I went to church Sunday morning. I went to church Sunday night. I went to church Wednesday night. I went to church on visitation. I went anytime I could go to church. You know why? It's the right thing to do. I didn't understand Portuguese. I didn't understand a thing. And I was telling some of them at the table today some of the mistakes we made in Portuguese. Oh, we made mistakes all the time. We could write a book about the things we said. <laughs> I mean, listen, one, one, one missionary here is at the graveside, and they're having a funeral, and they're at the graveside, and he was preaching a funeral. Now, he was honest he could be. He was trying to be as simple and as honest he could be. And he was using the wrong word. It, it, this was not me. I promise you, this was not me. He said, you see this porco laying in the ground here? You see this porco that we see here? Well, he should have been saying, instead of saying porco, he should have been saying corpo. And so he was using the wrong word. And so the whole time he was preaching a funeral, and everybody sitting there, this, this, this pig laying in the ground, this pig you see in here in this casket, this pig, well, they understood that he he didn't mean to say a pig. He didn't mean to call him a pig. But he was just saying, hey, he thought he was saying this body you see him laying here, this body, but he was calling him a pig. And so whenever he did that, you know what? There's people got saved. You know why? Because he was spending his time serving the Lord. Mm -hmm. Serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Now turn with you, would real quick over to Ephesians chapter number 5. Look at Ephesians chapter number 5. And, and, and these verses we have heard all of our lives. But in Ephesians chapter number 5, and I'll give you a couple of things here. E Ephesians chapter 5, you there already? Say amen. Verse number, amen. Verse number 16. Redeem, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Redeeming the time. That word redeem means a payment of price to recover from the power of another. Now Jesus Christ, He went to the cross and He bought us back because we had been in the power of another. He died on the cross of Calvary so we could have eternal life. Now I wonder who or what has stolen our time that we don't want to serve the Lord. I wish that I had the power, I wish that I had the influence that I could say to every member of Zion Hill Baptist Church, would you be here Sunday morning? Would you be here Sunday night? Would you be here Wednesday night? Hey, would you come to Sunday school? And we always have an excuse, don't we? We always have an excuse. Would you agree with me that we're living in evil days? Yes. We're living in evil times. We would have never dreamt of the things that's going on today what we would have ever seen in our time, in our lifetime. We see young people doing things we never thought of. Mm. We see, hey, we see older people doing things we never thought of. I mean, we hear it on the news every day. It's so sad to turn on the news. You see, that we need to redeem the time. We need to buy it back. Don't raise your hand on this one. Please don't raise your hand. I'm not asking you to do that. But how many times have we wasted days and hours and years? Mm -hmm. We could have done something for the Lord, and we didn't. I mean, I do it. I, I catch myself doing it all the time. Then he says, <coughs> here, days are evil. That means bad. That means labors. That means pressed and harassed. That means under the power of thoughts and the speech and the acts of evil. That's what he's talking about. And boy, our, our young people and our young families, I, I just thank the Lord for our church. Our church, our biggest group of people in our church in Greenville, South Carolina, are young couples and young families. I'm serious, on an average Sunday morning, we have so many children running around our church. We have young families who graduated college, got good college degrees, and got good jobs, and they're trying to raise their family for the Lord. And to see those children, and sometimes people say, well, preacher, did that baby bother you? No, no, no. If I can't preach louder than a baby cries, mm -hmm. I got a bunion on my tongue, I got a collapsed <laughs> lung, and I need to go get me another profession. Because, listen, I, I, I really do believe that I can out-preach any crying baby. It's a joy for me to see babies. You know what I do? I, 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 every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, and every Wednesday night, you know what? All the children come to me after church. You know why? I got a bag of candy. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm the candy man. Oh, they come around me. And they, they know. They know that, hey, we got candy. And sometimes I've got to tell them, oh, 
I didn't buy any today. Oh, they get mad at me. <laughs> yeah, they become Baptist real quick. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, they do. They get mad real quick. But what I'm saying is, hey, we need to redeem the dime. They, listen, the days are evil. Here's the thing. I reckon she'll be the youngest one in here. How old is she? Five. Five years old. You're five years old. Did you bring your boyfriend to church tonight? No. Okay, can you bring him tomorrow night? I'll need to meet him, okay? All right, bring your boyfriend tomorrow night. <laughs> five years old. Five years old. Isn't it wonderful to know that we've got a child five years old? Amen. Here's the sad thing. Now, I'm not saying it's going to happen to her. We pray that it wouldn't happen to her. But when they get 15, they get tired of church. They get tired of hearing the preacher say the same old thing all over and over and over again. And they got so much attraction, so much attraction out in this world. Mm -hmm. That's why we've got to keep their minds full of the Bible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I stop and say this time out right here? I'm not going to charge you for this one. <laughs> I promise you. Huh? And, and this is free, what I'm getting ready to say. Don't ever punish your children by sending them to the bedroom and making them read the Bible. You'll make them hate the Bible. Oh, that, that, that's punishment. I don't want to no, know. No, I, 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 now, you're talking about trouble. You're talking about trouble. And you're talking about families. Just before we left, I had a man in my church. I had a man in my church. Here's what he told me. Sunday morning, he said, Preach, you have time. Listen, I was in a hurry to get in my car and drive up here. He said, you have time to talk to me at the church. I said, Will, can we talk now? He said, well, I don't want to bother you before you preach. I said, but I, I, I can't. I don't have time at church. Can we talk now? His son, how old is, how old is Neil? 18, 17, 18. He said, Neil left home. He said, my son left home. I said, Will, don't tell me that. He said, yeah, my son left home. He's grown up in church all of his life. My son left home. You see, the days are evil. Mm. We need to redeem them. Yeah. Redeem in the time because the days are evil. Mm -hmm. Listen, I don't know how you feel about your family, but I've got three. All yes. mine are married. We've got five grandchildren. I thank the Lord every day that all my children are still in church. Mm -hmm. They serve the Lord. My son plays the piano. My daughter plays the organ. Mm -hmm. My youngest son lives in Houston, Texas. He's the singer in the family. He's got the voice. And he works in a church down in Houston, Texas. And, and, and you know, just to know that my children, I know so many preachers, so many preachers, they've lost their family. They've lost their kids. They've gone astray. Mm -hmm. You support one missionary back there, Brother uh, Scott Allen. Mm -hmm. Y'all read his prayer letters in Brazil. Mm -hmm. I've known Scott. I've known James. I've known his mom and dad in Brazil. And, and, and Scott Allen, when he became a teenager, he came back to the States. When he left his mom and dad, listen, he got out of church. He got away from the Lord. Hey, James, his brother. I remember James, his brother. We was in Camp Macedonia in Lula, Georgia. And, and they're preaching. Oh, James, he comes in his car. Boy, he had all kind of rock and roll music. He had all kind of stuff in his car. And the Holy Spirit of God got a hold of him through the preaching of the Word of God. James went out there in his car, jumped it all out, stomped on it, burned it, and everything like that. And now James is a faithful missionary servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, hey, listen, we've got so many things. Hey, the days are evil. We need to redeem the time because the days are evil. And don't think that my family is going to be exempt from that. They've been attacked. And then I have a, a young couple in our church. A young couple, they, uh, the wife came to my wife just a few weeks ago. And she said, I'm going to leave my husband. I'm going to leave my husband. Listen, listen, every church goes through these things. You know why? Because the days are evil. And I will say this, the devil is doing all he can to attack the family. So we've got to right. take some time now and we've got to serve the Lord and put God first, put our family in line and try to keep them in the house of the Lord. That's what we've got to do. Amen. Now this is not popular what I'm preaching, but I'll say this, we need it is the truth because we see our families being destroyed every day. Every day. Now, I don't know where you stand. Hey, I'm out here in Nebraska. I, I don't know where you stand politically, and I'm not going to make a political message tonight, but I will say this. I will say this. I'm glad that we can stand, and I'm glad that, hey, listen, I do not like it when our government tries to take away the traditional family values. Amen. I still believe one man to one woman. Amen. 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 It was God created Adam and Eve, didn't he? That's right. Not that's Adam right. and Steve. You've heard that right. many times. Right. So we have, we know, listen, that's the day we're living it in. And they want to teach us that in our public schools. The days are evil. So what do we have to do? Redeem the time. Can I say right. this? The time is now. Amen. There are some things that when we grew up with in the old days, 
that young people today, they have to live with it so much. You see, the line is not drawn as tight as it used to be. That's right. It's not. I mean, there, there, there's so much open up there. We still need to preach the Word of God. Go to Esther, chapter number 4. Just before Psalm in the Bible, you have Job. And then just before Job, you have the book of Esther. And we know the story about Esther. Here's Esther. She's in this, she's in this place. God has put, a, put her in this situation. And in Esther, chapter 4... You there? Mm -hmm. I want everybody to remember <coughs> Esther chapter 8, verse number 9 for tomorrow night. The longest verse in the Bible. And I'm going to question you. I'm just kidding. But I mean, listen, Esther, what a wonderful book. Do you know in the book of Esther, and, and you know that God's name is not mentioned one time in the book of Esther? Mm -hmm. Not one time is God's name mentioned in the book of Esther, but it, it is seen on every page. Amen. His name is seen on every page. He's not mentioned, but His name is seen. On, on every page. Now here's what Mordecai, her uncle, told her in Esther chapter 4 and verse number 14. For if thou altogether hold thy peace at this what? Time. time. You see that? There's time. Then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. You see that? Time. Time. This is the time. Hey, listen, this is the day we're living in. You know, people talk about all the time. They talk about the old days. The good old days. Yeah, the good old days when you had to go to the outhouse. <laughs> those are good old days, right? Oh, well, those are wonderful days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you love those days? Yeah. The good old days when you had to go down the creek and get a bucket of water. Yeah, you didn't have it in your house. You didn't have running water in your house. You know, the good old days. You know where people told me they could sweep the floor and feed the chickens through the cracks in the floor? Y'all remember those days? No. I'm th those are the, hey, we're living in the good old days now, I think. The now and now. People talk about the good old days all the time. But here's the thing. God has put Great Commission Baptist Church right here in Blair, Nebraska for such, such a time as this. Amen. Okay? Amen. The time <coughs> is now. And so we've got to take advantage of that time. Now, we can say, I'm too tired. We can say, listen, I, I, I don't have time. We can say, I've got something else to do. There's something more important. And what's at the top of your priority list? That's the thing you will do. Mm -hmm. So we've got to say, just like Esther, just like Esther, in verse number 16, we know the story that if she goes before the king without being summoned to go before the king, and he does not hold out the scepter, then she dies. And she said this, and if I perish, I perish. Such a time as this. The time is now. Can I say it's the time is now? i said this many times. Someone mentioned this tonight. I believe Brother Andrew did. I preached a message in our church, and I put it on the marquee out front of the church on both sides. As you come up down the highway in front of our church, in the old building, the old place we're in. Very busy highway. Greenville Hospital system, just three minutes behind our church, and more, everybody came through there going to the hospital, the workers and all that, on mor morning, Monday through Friday. I couldn't get out of the parking lot of the church because it would be backed up so far, the traffic. And I put out there one day on the sign, very simple, and I preached this message in our church, I love the Lord because, and I stopped it right there. You see, we always have a because. I love the Lord because He saved me. Well, that's a good reason to love the Lord. I love the Lord because He supplies my need. I love the Lord because He answers my prayer. I love the Lord because He provided for my family. He takes care of my family. And we can put a lot of things, but just think about this tonight. I love the Lord. What if He didn't answer another prayer? What if He didn't supply my need tomorrow? What if He didn't do me good tomorrow? You see, the Lord has already done enough for me to serve Him for the rest of my life, regardless if He does anything. But we always got to have that reason why. As I put that on the sign in front of the church, you would not believe the phone calls that I got from people coming up down the road. And they said, and I even would be out in, in the street or out to the store or something. And, and, and everywhere I go, I try to tell people I pastor Zion Hill Baptist Church. I want them to know where church is. I want them to know that we love them. Well, I, I want them to know that, hey, there's someone there that we care about you. And they, oh, yeah, I see some of the biggest, meanest-looking black dudes you ever seen in your life, you know. And I say something, oh, yeah, man, I came by that church and I saw that sign. Hey, it made me think. It made me think. Mm -hmm. 
it made me think, you know what we've got to do today? We've got to take time to think about what God is doing in our life. How much time do we have? How long will Great Commission Baptist Church be here in Blair, Nebraska? I was telling Moose today, I'm telling you, I've been here for three days, and I am so excited for this church. I see such potential in this town. I see such potential in this church. I am so excited about what God is doing, but it's going to take every individual in this church to say, yes. I want to take time to serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. I want to take time. Now, we could turn to Ecclesiastes, and we could read there's a time for every season. Right. There's a time to live. There's a time to die. There's a time to cry. There's a time to be happy. There's a time to rejoice. There's a time for everything. There's a time to plant. There's a time to sow. There's a time for everything. But can I ask you a question? Are we taking advantage of the time? While we have been playing, and I'll be honest, I believe a lot of churches do this, and I have, and you have. While we have been busy <coughs> playing church, you see, people get mad because they don't like the color of this flower here. Some people get mad because piano's on the wrong side of the church. <laughs> yeah. Anybody here, here, here ever lived in the southeast? You ever been up there? We're the Bible Belt. We're in worse shape than anybody. I mean, you have people complain about the color of the carpet. We had a, we had a, we had a special day, and I'm about finished here. I'm about finished, Brother Shank. If you would let me do something different tonight, would you allow me to do that? We had a a, a couple of weeks ago. We had something in our church. We had a meeting. I've never done this. We've never done this. And I had it Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. And I had three different preachers come in. And we had a special conference called I Love My Church Conference. And we had that on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. The next Sunday, we have what we call I Love My Church Offering. And, and I challenged our people for six months. Let's, let's, let's give sacrificially. Let's give when it hurts. And let's do something. In a small church on that Sunday, we took up that offering, and it came up to, to $23,711. Wow. And it just blew my mind. People said, Preacher, are you happy? I said, Man, look at this smile. I look like a slit watermelon, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm smiling so hard. And, and, and I was happy. they said, well, What were you expecting? I, I was praying for twenty to 25000 And I think some more has come in since then, and I think it's gone over $25,000. I love my church. You know what? You should love this church. The yeah. time is now to love this church. While we have been playing church, I was up in West Virginia, and I was helping this man in the hollers of West Virginia. He has started a church. And, and you, you'd be amazed when we went there to that church. There's eight of us from South Carolina. got <coughs> and went up there. He had hurt his back. He was going to add a Sunday school department on the back of his building. And we got up there. One of the men in our church, he said, Brother Bill, uh, how many people you have in your church? He said, zero. Don't have anybody. You don't have anybody in your church? No. What, 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 are you, what are you building the church for? God told me to. In the Holler, West Virginia. Holler, West Virginia. Next time I went up there, he had about 50 people in his church. People have been saved. God had been blessing. Many things have been happening in that church. Well, we went up there. And honestly, how he built that church, he had remnants of carpet. He had a co color here, a color here color here. He had about five or six different colors of carpet in his church. Long strips of carpet. I said, well, Brother Bill, you'll never have to worry about your church splitting up the color of the carpet. <laughs> you can please everybody. you got the rainbow color here. You'll, you'll never have to worry about that. Hey, people get mad. They'll get mad because you got a green chair. It should have been burgundy. While we've been playing church, mm -hmm. the devil been plotting yes, to has. get our family. Mm -hmm. We've been playing it's time to be serious. Amen. Now, the time is now to be serious. We had that meeting. What a great meeting we had. $23,711. And boy, we had a big meal that day. You wouldn't believe it. It looked like the marriage supper of the lamb. We had so much food. I was able to. I, I, I enjoy doing this. On Sunday morning, I get in the church van, and I go and pick up these kids. And I bring them to church, and I told them on Saturday, I said, hey, listen, we'll have a special day tomorrow. There's one little black boy. His name is Paris. His sister's named London. <laughs> so I, I go to Paris and London every week in my van. <laughs> and, and so he, get, and, and he, he can't talk plain. He's got a very, very strong speech impediment. He's from the South, like me. <laughs> That's what y'all think. <laughs> There's a communication problem here tonight. But... 
Paris, I said, don't say it, I said, Paris. Because every, every Sunday when he gets in the van, every Wednesday night when he gets in the van, he'll say, we having a party today? I said, no, he's like, oh. He gets uh -huh. mad. So that Saturday, I went by to him. Hey, we're going to have a different service tomorrow. I'm not picking you up at 9 or 9.30. I'm going to pick you up at 10.30. I said, we're having a party. Parents said, all right, party, party, church. <laughs> he just loved the fact. Hey, everybody's excited. Great day. Listen, our church was full. Probably close to 200 people there that day. I mean, just full. The, the church was full. And, and the Lord blessed. But you know what? I had somebody come up and say, you didn't take a tithe and offering today. I said, what? I said, we took up an offering. Yeah, but you didn't announce it's going to be tithe and offering. Really? Give me a break. Yeah, that's playing church. You know, you, know, you know what you want to do with people like that? I said this other night, take them out of the back. Two of you, and only one of you come back. And I'm going to go home with my wife that night. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I mean, you get mad. Yeah, I mean, listen, I mean, you know, some people, if you set them at home seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and send them a check for $1,000 a week, they still have something to complain about. Yes. Yeah, they would. And I will say this. While we have been playing church, <laughs> the devil has been plotting, and he's taking advantage of our families. Yes, he is. He really is. The time is now to be serious. The end days. Now, what I'd like to do tonight, if you don't mind, <coughs> Brother Shane, if you don't mind me doing this, I would like for, and I know we've already had altar prayer, but I would like for us to come down here to the front. Can it get somebody to come play something on the on the instrument? And let's just pray and say, Lord, would you teach me to number my days so I can take advantage of the time that's before me? The time is now. The time is now to make a decision for the Lord. The time is now to be serious. The time is now. To say, I'm going to put my family first. Man, I look out here and I see these young people. What a blessing. What a blessing. Mm -hmm. I told you about this young man in my church. He's been in my church since he was four years old. I thought he'd get tired of church. Today he's more stronger. And he leads my choir in church today. He doesn't know a thing about music. Leads the choir. Loves the Lord. Faithful as he can be. And I, I, I told this last night. He had a young lady <coughs> from Colorado. They both graduated from Bob Jones University. He was in Colorado. They were, he was about ready to get married to her. About ready to get engaged to her. And she got mad because he became the, the choir leader of our church. She did. She got mad at him. And when she got mad at him, because she said, I thought you would talk to me about this. And I thought that when we got married, we'd look for another church. And we'd go somewhere else. Well, just to make a long story short, he doesn't date her anymore. He said, that's it. I'm not going to leave my church. I'm not leaving my Lord. I'm not leaving what God's given me. I'm going to be serious about serving the Lord. Can I say it's time is now? Would you come down to every head bow? Join me here at the altar.